Right, done it again, bought another tent. The reason I bought this one is I'm still looking for a kind of ideal size two-man tent for me and my wife for campsite and mild wild camping. Uh, this seems to fit the bill about 3.17 kilos and I was looking for 130 width to give us a more comfortable sleep at night even if it means head to foot. A lot of the ones we've had are 120 to 127 and they are tight but I don't really want to carry the weight and bulk of a three-man. This is one of the things I do like about this design, this type of bag that opens on the side rather than the end. Just much, much easier for packing a wet tent when you're out in the field. So it comes with a repair kit, a uh, pole sleeve in there as well, shepherd's hook type pegs. Not the lightest in the world, but strong and reliable. And Yunnan poles. I've always been a wee bit wary of Yunnan, I don't know why, it's maybe unfair. I think DAC having such a stronghold in the market just makes me think Yunnan is a wee bit second class citizen, maybe unfairly. But they're uh, chunky, good thickness, they look about 9.5-10mm, so pretty strong and they're connected with a hub so I believe. So I don't think these are separate, they're all, you can't lose one in the field. This I do like, uh, this tent comes with clear windows in I think both vestibules I'll show you in a minute. Which is a nice feature you don't see in many tents. Mountain hardware seem to do it a lot. Uh, North Face, some of the kind of mountaineering tents the same. Because this is maybe having to go back, depending on if it's not big enough, I'm going to have to erect it in the living room here. So bear with me, this is going to be a bit of a faff. I've got the poles assembled. You can see they're held by two little swivel hubs. So I'm just going to work out now how to put them together. The pole tips seem to be colour-coded. Grey, blue, black, and at the other end a red one I think. Uh, overall impression, very heavy duty built. It feels more like a mountain tent than a backpacking tent. Big chunky poles, chunky material, heavy duty guy lines, probably a wee bit overkill and probably too heavy. So I could save some weight on this. Um, but yeah, it's nicely constructed. Typical Van Gogh quality. So kind of mid-market, but heavy-duty, Clyde-built, you might call it, which is kind of apt considering where Van Gogh is based. And a bit of a godsend as well. It was actually pre-assembled with the inner tent in place, though obviously you can remove it, so that's good. And a kind of rainbow, not rainbow door, but a circular door, triangular, which then tucks away into a corner pocket here. Well, I've just noticed at the top of the vestibule is the zip. Main zip pillars are very chunky again, good. There's also a secondary zip pillar at the top. So you can vent. Um, underneath there's a hood just outside here. You can hear it. Which means you could leave a wee bit vented without rain getting in, which will be good for just keeping a nice interior climate. Uh, one of the other tents I've looked at and I've had before is the MSR Elixir 2. And if you compare the Elixir 2's interior with this, the Elixir 2's get much more mesh. So maybe a 50-50 split between solid panels. This seems much more winterized in the sense that there's only a couple of wee mesh panels at the top. And then on the doors you can choose to zip or seal the doors. So definitely designed for harsher, colder weather I would say, rather than the American climate. It feels relatively spacious so far. The walls are quite steep on one side, but slightly more tapered on the other. Come in a wee bit. And that's because of the overhanging pole, where there isn't a pole running all the way to the corner. But the tray ground sheet looks really high. Maybe nearly almost a foot high. So its dome shape should make it fairly stable from all different angles of wind, which means it won't be too fussy about which way you pitch it in the wind direction. The one weakness I would say maybe might be this panel here which is a wee bit less supported than even this side where there's more of a more metal work basically bracing it but uh, it might be fine we won't know until we really try it the vestibules are very generous and deep so and with the angle of the tent and the height of the tent more to the point it's got a good high roof the uh, it'd be no problem with cooking as you can see ceiling height big Absolutely no problem with the head height on this, it's massive. Uh, so yeah, again that gives it a nice feeling of airiness. And the walls are quite steep on the sides, which means again you get the full 130 centimetre width around about the shoulders and the head as well. If I'm nitpicking it would be nice to have a zip there. 
put your hand in and pull the prop vent in and close it from the inside rather than having to do it from the outside but it's just minor niggles and for the price you can't really complain. There's also some fairly discreet wee hanging loops tucked away in some of the corners so you can run a line, run a lantern. Even at the doorway there's sufficient headroom to sit and cook without stooping too much. I mean I'm not particularly tall but it's fine. Uh, and again feels a wee bit more airy because of the window up here which I do like and also the two way zip for venting for cooking so you can expel hot wet air out the top of the tent when you're uh, cooking away in wet conditions. That's the two normal sized uh, Neo Air Thermaris in place. So 130 wide at both ends so sleeping head to foot a wee bit easier. Um, it just feels more roomy than say the Elixir at 127 or the Nature Hike uh, Cloud Peak 2 which we had before which was 130 at this end but only 120 at the foot. These won't tinkle in the night so there's no metal zippers. I never understood why Hilleberg don't do this. It's a polyester fly so the tear strength won't be as good but it has a good hydrostatic head way more than you'll need. Um, and of course you don't get the stretch that you get in Siln Island so it tends to stay taut when it's pitched and a wee bit quieter in the wind. That's one half of the vestibule with a 45 litre Osprey rucksack in it so plenty of room. You can still cook there easily, store your boots and other bits and pieces to the side. Double pockets for storing bits and pieces. So you can put your heavier phone at the bottom and lighter stuff in the top there. And you've got the same on the opposite side. You can also pin back both doors on both sides so you get a nice view and you see the good big overhang there to keep rain off so even if there was a some light rain you wouldn't have to actually close the tent up and still enjoy the view. So there you have it, a quick overview of the Van Gogh Torridon 200. I got it from summits.co.uk at a bargain price as far as I'm concerned of £135. At that price I think it's a real bargain. I'd say 200 to 250 is a fair price for a tent of this calibre. I like the fact that it's, it seems to be very chunky, it seems like a mountain tent rather than an ultralight backpacking tent and at 3.1 kilos it's still fine for two people for backpacking. So very impressed so far but I'm going to get it out this weekend and we'll try it and I will let you know and uh, do another wee film once I've actually tested it properly. Again thanks for watching and uh, if you get any questions just drop them below and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.